OK, so my name is uh, Yuqin Ruan. I'm now working for Critio. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about a model for CTR prediction called Field Aware Factorization Machines. And this work is a joint work with uh, Yong Zhuang, Wei Xuan Qin, and Zhu Yan Lin. And part of, of this work was done when I was in National Taiwan University. So uh, when we talk about this uh, CTR prediction, uh, usually what people do is that we have a model. And this model will predict a decision value called S. So uh, usually we have a logist, logistic function to transform this S into a probability. So what we are going to talk about today? Today we are going to talk about four ways to calculate this S. So they include a linear model, degree two polynomial mapping, factorization machines, and the field aware factorization machines. So let's start with this uh, simple example. So let's say today you have an impression from Nike to ESPN. Then with the linear model, what do you do? Basically, you, what you do is that for each feature, you learn a weight. So we have a WESPN, and we have a Nike, uh, W Nike. So linear model is uh, simple, it's uh, efficient, but what's the problem of a linear model? The problem is it is too simple. So let's say we have a, a particular high CTR from Nike to ESPN. And basically, this information cannot be learned by linear model. Because the linear model is kind of learning the average behavior of each feature, and it cannot learn the effect of a feature conjunction. So to learn the effect of a feature conjunction, the simplest model is called poly2. So the idea of poly2 is also very simple. So for each feature, uh, now for each feature pair, we learn a weight. Therefore, we have a new weight called WESPN and Nike. So if uh, now you, your uh, CTR from Nike to ESPN is very high, then basically you are learning a large positive weight for this weight. So what's the uh, problem of poly2? So the problem happens when the data set is uh, sparse. So let's say you only have two impressions from Gucci to ESPN then basically your prediction is unreliable because you are learning this weight only from two data points. And the second problem is that, you, for, for example, for Nike to work, you may have completely no impression. So in this case, you have nothing to learn for WVOC and Nike. So your prediction will be trivial. So for the sparse data set, I'm going to introduce the third model called factorization machines. So the idea of uh, factorizing machines is that instead of learning an uh, explicit weight for each, each, of, uh, for each feature pair, we, for each, now uh, we want to learn things in latent space. So for each feature, now we have a latent vector. So we have VSPN and we have V Nike. So when we are learning the conjunction between ESPN and Nike, basically what we do is the inner product of these two vectors. So the length of uh, this latent vector is a user-defined parameter. Usually, it can be something like 40 or 100. So, uh, so here we come back to this uh, Nike VOG problem. So uh, to, to calculate the S, note we need two vectors. One is called V VOG, and one is called V Nike. So even we don't have any traffic from V VOG, uh, we don't have any traffic from Nike to VOG, but we can still learn this VVAC from 1,000 data points. And we can still learn this VNike from an, another 1,000 points. So in this sense, the prediction of a Nike to VAC can be more reliable. So before I introduce FFN, we need to consider another example. So in this example, we have a new field called gender, and also a new feature called male. So note the terminology I use here. For this uh, publisher, advertiser, gender, I call them field. And for this, uh, so for each field, we have multiple features. So publisher, we have ESPN, Vogue, and the advertiser, we have Nike, Gucci, and the gender, we have male, female. So in this example, when we calculate S, what FN do is that uh, we do VSPN.VNike plus VSPN.VMail. So if you think about this formulation again, uh, when we do this VSPN.VNike, we are actually learning the latent factors 
between publishers and advertisers. And when we do this uh, VSPN.vmail, we are learning the latent factors between publishers and gender. So conceptually, uh, the latent factors between publisher and advertiser can be very different from the latent factors between publisher and gender. However, here you see that FFN used the same latent vector for both latent spaces. So the idea of uh, FFN is that we want to split the latent vector. So for FN, for each feature, we only have one latent vector. And in FFN, for each feature, we have multiple latent vectors. So for ESPN, now we have VESPN A and VESPN G. So this VESPN A is used uh, when you are learning the latent vectors between publisher and advertiser. And this VESPN G is used when you are learning the latent vectors between publisher and gender. So here you see how we use the field information to split the latent space, and how we use the latent uh, uh, information to choose the corresponding latent vector. So this is why this model is called field-aware factorization machines. And uh, here we compare FN and FFN again. And this slide is the most important slide in this talk. So, for FN, we only have one latent vector called ESPN, and it is used for both uh, latent spaces. And for FFN, we have two latent vectors. And according to different uh, latent space, we use a different latent vector. So we have introduced the four models we are talking about today. And uh, now I'm going to share two experiences of using FFN on CTR prediction. So the first experience is that in June 2014, we attended a CTR competition hosted by Critio. So our team name is the Three Idiots, and there were more than 700 teams attending this competition. And just to be clarified, now I'm working for Critio, but I joined Critio after this competition was finished. So during the competition, we tried a lot of different models, and we find that FN is the most powerful among them. So we use FN as our major model, and uh, we do some feature engineering, we do some feature ensemble, and finally we won the first prize of this competition. So we were so uh, very excited that FFN is uh, so powerful for CTR prediction, so we want to try FFN on modern assets. Unfortunately, uh, right after this first competition finished, FDU launched another CTR competition called uh, on November 2014. So we thought, why not? Why not we join this competition and use FFN again and see how it performs in this new competition? So we teamed up, and this time we have a new teammate. So the teammate becomes four idiots, and uh, we have uh, 16, uh, more than 1,600 teams join this competition. Yeah, so we do the same thing. We use FFN as a major model and do feature engineering and do uh, model ensemble. And finally, uh, we won this uh, competition, the first place. And what's more exciting is that uh, actually in this competition, the top five teams all include FFN in their winning solution. So. Now I'm going to use the data sets in these two competitions to compare the full model I have introduced today. So note that in our competition, we have some model ensemble. And model ensemble means that you have to train a lot of models. So for the simplicity to run experiment, we will remove the ensemble part. Here is the result of, com result of comparison. So first thing we see is that FFN is indeed the best among the four models. But there is no free lunch. You can also see that the training time for FFN is longer than FN and the linear model. And at the other end, we can see that linear model is super fast, but the log loss is actually much worse than the other models. It is because the linear model is not learning the effect of a feature conjunction. And of course, if we use the FFN with the ensemble setting, then we will get the first place in both competitions. So now I want to emphasize that uh, if you believe that FFN is powerful and you want to try it, 
Then uh, one thing you need to do is that you need to assign a field to each feature. So assign a field is very easy for category data sets. So in this data set, we can easily see that the field of uh, ESPN and Vogue is publisher, and the field of Nike and Gucci is advertiser. But for numerical features, it is a little bit tricky. So for example, we want to use the H index and the citation of the first author to predict if his or her paper will be accepted or not. So we have two numerical features. And uh, in this case, you basically have uh, two options. The first option is that uh, we do this dummy field, which means the field is exactly your feature. So we are basically saying the field of H index is H index. The field of citation is citation. And another option is that we do this uh, discretization. So by doing discretization, basically it means that we transform the numerical features into categorical features. So now we have four features, and we can say that the field of uh, H index 2 and H index 100 is H index. And the field of citation 3 and citation 50,000 is citation. So we will compare these two approaches later on. So finally, I want to show you that uh, in addition to the two data sets we have uh, showed, now we also try these four models on more data sets. So basically, for this uh, KDD 2010 and 2012, uh, these two data sets, are, most of features are categorical, and they are very large scale and very sparse. And for fishing and adult, they also, most of features are categorical, but they are small and denser. And for code RNA and IJCNN, uh, it is a pure numerical data set. So here you, we can see that in the KDD data set, FFN is still uh, significantly better than other data sets. And for fishing and adult, it depends. So for example, in fishing, it's still better, but for adult, it's uh, close to poly 2. And what's interesting for numerical data set is that if we do dummy field, we don't see any benefit of uh, using FFN. But if we do discretization, uh, indeed, FFN is the best among all of the models. But it seems like doing the discretization itself is harmful. So the conclusion we learned here is that if your data set is uh, categorical, and it's uh, large, and it's sparse, uh, then FFN might be very helpful. But if, if your data set is uh, small and dense, or your data set is uh, numerical, then uh, we are, it is not clear if FFN will be useful or not. So uh, because of the time limitation, I couldn't go through all the topics in our paper. So actually, we also uh, introduced how we use the stochastic gradient and other grid to solve the optimization problem. And we also discussed how we parallelize it and show the speed up. And finally, we find that FFN can easily overfit the training data. So it is necessary to use early stopping to prevent overfitting. So to use early stopping, basically you need a standalone validation set. And when you observe the log loss of the validation set go up, then you terminate the training process. So if you are interested in using FFN, we have an open source package called libffn. And also, if you are interested in what Crito is doing, we have a booth in this conference. Thank you for your attention. OK, so time for some questions. Hey, thanks for the talk. Uh, have you considered, have you compared your method with XGBoost, which is another popular method to do uh, click through prediction? Uh, XGBoost, we have, uh, we have tried that. Uh, not, actually, not XGBoost, but uh, it's, uh, we tried Gradient Boost. Because XGBoost is a package, right? But, so we didn't use that package, but in the competition, we actually, we tried. Uh, gradient boosting decision tree and also random forest, but we didn't get the better result uh, for this in this uh, uh, critical competition. 
Yeah, but, but, but I mean, it's a roughly, it's a rough comp comparison. It's not like serious comp comparison. So that's why we didn't put it in the, our paper. Yeah, thank you. Uh, hi, great talk. So you, you. mentioned uh, overfitting, and one thing I was thinking of is regularization. Yeah. Because you're, for each factor, you're getting a lot of parameters now. Mm -hmm. So do you try different techniques, and do you have anything to say on like lasso versus other techniques for regularization? Uh, by te techniques, do you mean what techniques? Oh, like, I was just wondering if regularization oh, yeah, helps yeah. here. So, or not. so of course yeah. we have tried the regularization, but the thing is that we we couldn't find a good way to regularize the the these FFN. So basically, regularize is that you need uh, uh, a parameter, right? The, the larger the parameter is, then the more your model is regularized. So what we observed is that if you use large regularization value, then basically our model cannot fit that well in this data set. But if you use too small uh, parameter, then you will, you will overfit. So that's why we are saying that the, the only way we found so far is to do early stop. Yeah, and uh, basically we didn't find a good uh, way to regularize it. Any more questions? I have a quick question about the yeah. evaluation. Um, so you compare to a lot of different algorithms, and yes. you, it's very good that you actually uh, describe all the different parameters. I was wondering, how did you go about hyperparameter tuning all those different algorithms, and are you sure that you chose the best ones for each one of them? Uh, yeah, so first of all, I'm sure I chose the best, best of uh, best uh, hyperparameter for for each algorithm. Yeah. So uh, so basically, for linear model, it's you just need to tune the regularized parameter. And uh, for uh, it, it depends the the optimization you use because if you use some like uh, CDDO or some LBFGS, then you you don't have to to tune the the new rate. But if you use the SGD, then you have to tune the new rate. So uh, because uh, what I showed in this slide, we use SGD to solve all the uh, model. So learning rate is the common parameter for all the, uh, all the, all the models. And the uh, uh, regularization is also common for all, all of them. And so what addition, uh, what's the addition for FFN is the, yeah, it's the number of latent vectors. Yeah, it's the addition parameter we need to tune. Any other question? Okay, so let's thank our speaker again. Thank okay. you. Thank you.